at the marketplace, we used to call it Jamhuri Market. Uh, th those kids and I would dance to some music that was being played by salesmen who were selling music by pop popular artists around central province of Kenya. And we would dance to the music at the marketplace and our dancing would attract people. And in return, the people would buy the tapes it was tapes back then and because they would buy the tapes the salesmen would ask us to keep on dancing and they will give us money to buy food and sometimes they'll just buy us food that was a very symbiotic relationship in the marketplace it was a very low place in life but we had this symbiotic relationship where we ate at the end of the day especially us guys we were out there walking around with dogs a lot of them with the the orphans had a lot of dogs and it was really very fun but that's at the same time very dangerous at the same time very you know very tough because sometimes the older boys would attack us and would bully us around the sad part of this story is that one time we, we went to swim in Chania River in Kenya. And uh, you know, we were these five, six year old boys and we were like 10 of us. And we didn't know how to swim so much, but we used to swim, swim in this deep area of Chania River in Blue Post. Uh, people who live there know what I mean. This place, Blue Post, used to be where Thika River and Chania River met. And there was a deep somewhere where we could swim. But uh, we were not really swimming. We had these empty cans that had, were very, you know, empty cans that we used to float around. We used them as floaters. And one of the boys miss kind of let his can go with the water and he was at the deep end and to tell you the truth this boy drowned he didn't have any parents he didn't have anyone we were too scared to call the police he he drowned he came to us no one knew about him and he left only us guys knew about him so anyway, eventually I fought with the whole situation and I was wondering what was the purpose of this kid. Anyway, this kid, I realized eventually that his purpose was contained in me because I'm the only person who is alive that knows that that kid lived. Maybe I'm the only person. If the other guys are still alive, I know my cousins are still alive, but they were not there with me that day. Uh, I know some boys who are, uh, might be alive today, but they might not have had a chance to grow and be educated like me and get to a point whereby they have this self-awareness like me and they are knowledgeable and wise about life like me. So they, even if, even if they are alive, I don't know if they really can understand up to today why this kid died. But I think this kid died so that we can know that we have a purpose. This kid's purpose was in us to tell the story, to tell people about this kid that things can be worse than they are right now. Things can be worse than your situation right now. Because if this kid just came and lived and walked the streets with us and then died. Who are we to complain that we didn't have enough tuition money to go to college? We, we can rise up from that situation and say, hey, it was worse for some people. They never even made it through the childhood and we saw with our own eyes. Anyway, that was the bad part of the whole story of my childhood. The good part was the the games, the dancing in the streets, the marketplace, the music, the playing around with the dogs, the running, the, the adventures. 
uh, there was not much about it that a normal person can find good but I think even when you're in the worst situation sometimes even when you're in the lowest of the lowest points in your life there is a way to find good in it just like a rose it's so thorny but then it smells great if you think about the thorny parts of it you won't pick it up you won't love uh, roses but if you think of how magnificent how wonderful that scent is from a rose and how beautiful it is I believe you will always find good in anyone or anything